what up what up hi happy friday or happy whatever day it is that you are listening to this right now it's friday evening and it's time for a quick discussion thoughts takeaways about the greatest thing on earth which is duke basketball if you're listening to this you most likely have duke in your top 10 of greatest things on earth so you know that's good enough hi Duke obviously played at Indiana Wednesday, and what a game it was. Um, I didn't realize Indiana fans were that hostile, that loud, that crazy. The team isn't, you know, they're not, they're not great, so I didn't know what to expect. I know that's kind of like the official basketball capital or, you know, whatever. But I didn't really expect it to be like it was. It kind of felt like old school Maryland. It felt like an old school Maryland game. It kind of felt like just those old school ACC games where everybody just said terrible things about J.J. Reddick. That's what it felt like uh, on Wednesday. You know, Big Ten Challenge, ACC by a fair margin. But we'll get into that soon. You know, I, f- I figured road game, it's always tough on the road. The narrative of this team seems to be the same each game. I don't want to really sound like a broken record because each time it's either Duke digs a hole and then climbs out of it and wins. Duke starts slow, and then when it matters, they make the right plays and they win. As of late, it hasn't mattered what competition it is. It hasn't mattered where the game is. It hasn't mattered who they're playing. It hasn't mattered at all. It's just tough games, and the mistakes that are made seem to keep being the same, you know, consistent, making the same mistakes. And, you know, like I said, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but these things are going to happen with a – a young team and playing on the road and playing, you know, the PK 80 tournament, those weren't away games, but they weren't at Cameron. So it's kind of in a sense, an away game. So, I mean, those things are just, they're going to happen with this young team and nine games in 20 days, there's really no time to practice. You're either, you know, sleeping, eating or traveling or playing basketball. And then counter, add in the fact that these are college students. This isn't UNC. You you actually have to do classwork sometimes. So factor all those things in, and as Coach K said, there's just been no time to practice. There's been no time to work on things. There's been no time to sort of implement any new strategies or improvements in the defense or the offense. It's been all about you know, survive this game and on to the next one, basically the very next day or the day after. It's December now, happy December, but, you know, they're they're not going to be playing as much. You know, the holidays are coming and there will be a little break time and things like that, but less games this month is going to give this team some time to, you know, kind of heal up and at the same time, start working on improvements in the team and in the defense and just the overall aspect of everything about the team. That's why they have such a great coaching staff, you know, adapting, adjusting, and that I really think that's what kind of December and January is going to be about. Conference play is coming soon, and, you know, a road game in conference, it it doesn't matter – who like it doesn't matter what team it is it doesn't matter who you have on your team you know Duke has a target on their back they always do but they really do this year you have Grayson Allen you have potentially the best freshman in the NCAA and then you have loads of talent around that it's a lot to hate it's a lot to dislike and it's a lot to want to come out and beat especially 
at your fan base or, you know, an away game for Duke, another team, you have your fan base behind you. And, you know, that fan base might not show up at all for, you know, 15 games. It might be 20% capacity. But when Duke comes to town, the fans are coming out. They're going to be obnoxious. They're going to be stupid. They're going to be loud. They're going to be crazy. When you're Duke, that's what happens. You saw it against Indiana. You're going to see it against, I'm not sure specifically every road game that Duke has this year. They actually have a favorable schedule for the first time in a long time, which what I mean by that is the ACC, there's so many fucking teams that it's an unbalanced schedule. So some teams you only play one time. And I think Virginia and I think Notre Dame and a few teams that are really good teams, Duke only has to play one time, and the one time that they have to play them is at home. Like I said, I don't have the schedule in front of me right now. I'm not sure. I've already talked about it before, but, you know, you still don't get away from the fact that you're going to have a lot of away games, and no matter who it's against, you're going to get their best shot. They know that. Duke knows that. We know that. And that's what we have to look forward to. And that's why ACC is so fun to watch. You know, basically any game is – there's some type of drama or excitement out of it. You know, every now and then you're going to beat the shit out of Wake Forest by 50. Or, you know, somebody like that, Boston College. But also you'll flip the – you know, you flip the TV on 12 o'clock on a Saturday and UNC's losing by 10 to Boston College or Duke struggling against Georgia Tech, or, you know, whatever it is. And that's, like I said, that's why conference play is so fun. And I would think and I would say Duke should win the regular season conference championship. I think they really should. And, you know, I just say it should happen, and I think if they don't, then, you know, it's kind of a letdown. But then on the other hand, the regular season conference championship, unbalanced schedule, regular season, it's not a tournament. It's like in most years you say, yeah, it don't really matter. If the schedule was balanced, I would care about it a lot more because everyone played a fair schedule. So whoever has the most wins and the least losses – you're the champion. But these unbalanced schedules are bullshit. However, this year Duke has a favorable one. So maybe I won't complain as much this year. How about that? Anyways, this Indiana game, you know, they got Indiana's best shot. Uh, they struggled a little bit in the beginning and throughout the game, and it just seemed like couldn't really find the flow. And, you know, again, the struggle with man defense. And even in the zone, it's not it's not the best zone I've ever seen. You know, you still have to move your feet. You still have to hustle. That's, you know, zone isn't a break from man. Zone is because you can't play man worth a shit. And that's just because, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, these young kids – You know, freshmen, they're not used to playing hardcore defense the whole game. These are extremely talented top 10 players who did everything offensively for their team. And on defense was kind of just like, I'll block who I want to block. I'll guard who I want to guard. I'll hustle when I want to hustle. Main part of the story is give me the ball back. I mean, you can have the talent and the potential on defense, and you can have – the athleticism, the quickness, the wits. But you have to want to play defense. And you have to, you know, it's a learning period. It really is. And you're seeing that with this team. You know, people, Gary Trent, he's, you know, he's really athletic and he's really quick and he's strong. He should be a great defender, but people are going right around him like it's nothing. And that's just because he hasn't had to play 40 minutes of hard defense like he is now. It's an adjustment for everybody. So, 
that's what you're seeing. That's what everybody's seeing. That's why everybody's complaining on Twitter and social media and, you know, whatever. But everybody knows what they signed up for getting, you know, the best freshman recruiting class. At times having five freshmen on the floor and young teams, young attitudes, young defense. The good news is, is the amount of talent and how mature they already are as freshmen and the experience that they're building right now through these first three weeks, all of that is just going to help them improve their defense and help them improve their offense and everything else quick. Because, I mean, you got to do it quick. Three weeks of the season is gone, and, you know, that's nine or ten games. That's basically – a fourth of the season if you go all the way. So, you know, it happens quick, and they have to learn quick because a lot of them only want to be there one year. So, you know, it's a team it's a team aspect, and combine that with the greatest coaching staff. It's a problem that I'm okay having. But, you know, if they all stay there four years – they'd be the guaranteed the number one defense in the country by the second, third, or fourth year, definitely by the fourth year. But you don't get that luxury because, you know, they're going to make millions after this. And it's definitely too early to talk about who's going and who's staying, and I don't ever want to have that conversation. Like, let me enjoy my team. Like, everyone's talking, he may be the number one, like, Motherfucker, we know. Just let me enjoy him for 40 games, if that. Just let me enjoy it, okay? We can talk about that when the season ends. Until then, just let me enjoy Marvin Bagley, the Duke player. Thank you. But that's just me. The game, though, it was tough. And, I mean, again, it was another one of them where I just felt like when it comes down to it, Duke's going to make the right plays and overcome them. But the you know, the excitement from that crowd and the hatred from that crowd and the hype on the team, you know, on Indiana and a few plays that they were making that was just like whatever momentum Duke had, it was just killing it, combined with a few mistakes that Duke was making that was killing their own momentum and combined with a few terrible... Wendell Carter gets so fucked over on foul calls. I know sometimes he fouls people. But, yo, when somebody's traveling across the paint and Wendell Carter's just sticking his hands up and just guarding him, that's not a foul. That's called a travel. I know the difference, so the ref should know the difference, I feel like. And a few other things where he goes straight up and just because he's bigger than somebody, it's a foul. And then a few mental lapses where he does some dumb shit and gets a foul. I get that. But, you know, he's so good. Like, Wendell Carter is so good, and he's underrated because of all the talent around him. But when he's in foul trouble, I just feel like, oh, my God. Like, Bolden came in and put in some outstanding minutes. Javin, he put in some great minutes as well, got some good rebounds, made some good plays, both of them. You know, Marquise, he made a hustle play. The, you know, the diving steal, that was incredible. Changed the momentum of the game. Uh, pick and roll defense, incredible. And all that should not go undermined because those are huge from coming from the bench, you know. Like, he's coming in and he's he's locked in. Even though he's not starting, even though he's not getting huge minutes, he's not coming in, like, with his head down, like, oh, fuck this. That's huge. And Javin, his... You know, his potential's through the roof. It you could see it last year. You're like, oh man, it's only a matter of time for this guy's like a huge, you know, playmaker for the team or difference maker, or whatever. And you can still see it. He hasn't reached his potential, but he's still making good plays, and he always hustles. But Wendell, he's so talented on the block. He's so talented in the post, and then when he gets an offensive rebound, it's like. It's just a guaranteed dunk. He goes down with it, gathers, 
and he's just like, I'm under the basket. I'm going straight up. I'm dunking on anyone who's near me. And if you have a problem with it, then stop me. But you can't. And I love that. And when he's not in, I'm I'm like, oh, no, we're missing that. So seeing him getting in foul trouble on some, you know, a lot of questionable calls, it sucked. But, you know, once again, whether Marvin Bagley gets hurt, poked in the eye by his own teammate and goes out of the game against Michigan State, or Grayson fouls out and you got five players in, uh, five freshmen in overtime, or Wendell gets in foul trouble, or, you know, somebody's having a bad game, all the adversity, this team just fights right through it and just onward they roll undefeated. That's what they did today. Or, wow, they didn't play today. They played Wednesday. That's what they did Wednesday. Once again, I mean, the good news is they didn't dig a hole for themselves to climb out of. You know, they started slow and they they didn't look themselves, but they didn't go down 20. So, I mean, I'm happy about that. That's a, is that like a, like a good thing? Not necessarily, but I mean, you didn't go down 20. I'm just kind of waiting for this team to come out and smack somebody in the mouth and just go up 20, and then we just don't have to worry about it the rest of the game. They just keep piling on the lead. I know they did it against a few teams, but that's not really the caliber of teams that I'm talking about. I mean, you know, it's, they're fully capable to go out and smack Indiana right in the mouth, go up 20 points in the first half, and then you know, kind of coast to a win. And I don't like coasting to a win. I don't like chewing clock or anything, but you get what I'm saying. You know, they, they kind of had me on the edge of my seat the whole game. They had me jumping up, yelling, cussing, freaking out, clapping, pissing Presley off because I'm being so obnoxious. And she gets just as obnoxious, but when I do it, you know, it's like a problem, I guess. You know how that is. But, I mean, they kind of have my blood pressure going crazy the way that it's just like you know they shouldn't lose this game that they're playing. And I'm not talking about a specific game. I'm talking about every single game, so, like, recently. You're watching it and you're thinking, they might lose this or – this game is way too close. Or, wow, they missed 10 fucking free throws. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, man, come on. just I don't want this high blood pressure, but you're kind of worrying me. But again, every single game, even when they're down, I've never thought that they're out of the game because there's just so much talent. It's just it's crazy. For the offense, you know, it's it's not that the offense is bad. They just haven't all found their role yet. And another thing is your role can change from game to game, from matchup to matchup, from situation to situation. You have to know what your role is in every situation, but you have to know your overall role as well. The team hasn't really found that yet. You know, Trayvon Duvall, when he gets others involved, but at the same time he's slashing and dashing and getting layups and and kicking it out, the team is so good when he does that. Grayson Allen, he can get a bucket anytime you need it, but he's best coming off of screens. He's best finding them in the corner. But if Trayvon Duvall's on the bench, you know, Grayson can run the point. He can get others involved. He can make smart plays. Gary Trent, I mean, he's a big-time player. Like, in the big moments, he's there, and he's not scared of shit. You know, he's a talker. He's a, you know, he gets in under people's skin. He can make good plays. Same with everybody. But we don't need anybody to try to do everything themselves, ever. All that talent. Nobody, but again, all these players are the number one guy on their AAU team or high school team. So they're used to saying, give me the ball, get the fuck out of the way, watch what I do, you know? I mean, when you have little guys like, it's not even little guys, just, 
in high school and AAU, the defense isn't up to par with your t- offensive talent. And the players aren't up to par with you. You're one of the best players in the country. You know, Trayvon Duvall, Gary Trent, Bagley, Carter, all of them. One of the best players in the country. In AAU and stuff, they can ISO almost every single play. And it's hard, you know, when it matters, it's hard to shake that. And that's not a huge problem with this team. It's just in the back of their head, you know, they're used to doing that. So, you know, this team in a sense can kind of be like the Golden State Warriors. And I don't like the Warriors. Everybody knows that. And I'm not saying they can shoot threes and win games. That's not what I mean. What I mean is they have more talent than everybody. And the talent knows their roles. Everybody on the Golden State Warriors knows their role. And nobody on the Golden State Warriors is selfish. That's the keys to their success. When there's a mismatch, they take advantage of it. You know, for Duke, the mismatch is down low. Marvin Bagley, Wendell Carter. Usually, there's going to be a mismatch somewhere with the size of them and the talent of them. Take advantage of those mismatches. And if they try to stop them by doubling or whatever it is, then you're going to have another opening somewhere else. I saw Marvin Bagley was frustrated as fuck because they would not get him the ball quick enough, wouldn't get him the ball when he was calling for it. You know, he was catching the ball out at the three-point line. Like, that's not, he needs it down low. Get it to him down low. And I know some things because they're defending well, and it's hard to get it to him. But you could tell he was frustrated. Saw it plenty of times few other things is just people trying to do it all themselves and and ending up hurting the offense and then allowing Indiana to get transition buckets but that's gonna happen I mean it's just it's a young team it's just it's gonna happen you just have to adjust what you can learn from your mistakes and move on to the next game you got the win in a very hostile environment And, you know, the coaching staff, they're going to see all this shit that I'm saying. Like, I'm a nobody. I'm just talking about what I think. And, you know, I have a couple narratives from what people have said to me on Twitter and things. And it's kind of in the same realm, you know. This guy says, still a bit of concern for the free throws. We leave a lot of points there. That's a thousand percent true everybody knows it and it irks my nerves a lot I think it irks everybody's nerves so yeah this person said the finishing skill of this squad I want to know the scoring margin for the 10 minutes uh for the last 10 minutes of every game I responded 800 to 5 I don't think that's very accurate but that's what it feels like so I have to agree with that This person said, obviously, one is man-to-man defense. We switch a ton, so freshmen get lost and lose rotation and help duties. They need to learn their angles when trying to stop penetration, Gary especially. I hope Kay has been working on zone offense since teams are bound to zone us to protect the paint. That's true. Both things are true. You know, man defense, they're young. They haven't played man. Or, you know, they haven't played defense in general like they're expected to at Duke. And it's something they're going to have to work on. And then other teams playing zone on Duke, that's very possible. Uh, That's one way to counter a crazy mismatch is to play zone. So you could definitely see that. Well, you've already seen it, but you will see it in the future, too. Also said, I'm impressed with how much poise this young group continues to show. One of the most hostile environments, trading punches, and no one panics. Just keep playing their game until the other team breaks. That's also a fact. You don't really see this team get rattled. You see them get a little frustrated and everything, but but they never look like they're out of the game. They never look 
like the mountain is too big to climb, whoever's facing a you know face to face, whoever it is, it don't matter with this team, and that's big for this young group. Um, like I said, you know the same narratives are kind of the same after every game. Work on free throws, work on defense, uh, get started earlier, slow starting, but good at the end. It's like, yep, that's been the same thing for the past five games. That's why this this episode, I'm like, what can I even talk about? I can just replay the other one and just whatever team I was talking about, just splice in Indiana. But here we are. And then everyone else said the same thing, basically. Man-to-man defense, rebounding off missed free throws. Defense, got to figure out something. (laughs) And then very impressed with the poise of this young team. And then another one said, free throws and zone defense. (laughs) Or keep playing zone defense. So, like I said, those have been the narratives for a minute. They still are. I'm going to have a few more games to, you know, kind of work it out, work on it a little bit, see where it goes from there. And, uh, yeah, you know, Carter was in foul trouble, still had a huge game with 18 and 12. Seven for nine from the field, that's huge. You know, him and Bagley, Twin Towers, whatever the fuck you want to call them, best big men in basketball. And then the best help behind them, too. You know, you have Javin and Carter behind them. And then you even have Vrankovic behind them. I like Vrankovic. He's like the fifth option. And then, you know, Bagley, almost a quiet 23-10. and 10. It's like I, I felt like he could have had 50 as usual. I, I felt like, you know, he didn't really get the ball enough and the team was kind of sporadic for a little bit. But, you know, a win's a win. And, I mean, Bagley's probably going to get tired at times. I, I get I say give the ball to him every single play. I mean, truth is, you know, humans get fatigued so you can't give them the ball every play but when it's there you got to get it to them at least as quick as you can just to see how the defense reacts if if he gets the ball anywhere near the basket and it's one-on-one the percentage of him scoring two points is sky high you know trying to get him the ball and then not getting it to him and then taking a dumbass long two-point jump shot you know, it makes me be like, why? Like, just why? <laughs> that team should never have to take a contested fadeaway long-range two-point jump shot. And, uh, you know, this team at times it looks like they're they're good shooters. At times it looks like they've never shot a three in their life. Indiana game, they were three for 17. That's 17%. But, I mean, the threes, they don't make or break this team. And, you know, they shoot light years better at Cameron. And they play tomorrow, so we'll see if that improves. I thought Grayson played good. You know, one thing I want to say about that is the student section or whoever in Indiana yelling, fuck you, Grayson, like, I get it. That's, I just feel like that's just what it's come to. They just, it's like the cool thing to hate him. But I mean, dude, you, <laughs> you, how does it feel now? Like, how did that pay off for you? Fuck you, Grayson. Okay. Let's see. He came out, had a ferocious and one dunk. Or if it wasn't an and one, he just dunked all over the whole state of Indiana. Hit a step back three, make whoever was guarding him look stupid. Hit a fadeaway jump shot to seal the game. You know, put the dagger, send the crowd home, silent with their head down. He outscored every player on Indiana, out-assisted every player on Indiana. Showed nothing but class, even when every, you know, guys on Indiana getting rough with him, pushing him around, fouling him hard as shit. Crowd yelling, fuck you. Just showed class the whole time. That's what I love to see from him. I mean, that shows you his growth. He came out after the game, said the crowd was great, the atmosphere was great. 
I'm like, you're a bigger person than I was because I would have grabbed that mic and started spitting a diss track at those fucks. But, by the way, if you see the thing on Tinder where it was a Grayson Allen account saying, who's your daddy or whatever, that was fake. Everyone just immediately believes anything. Uh, But he tweeted out that it was fake. But, man, dude, just for him to show that and to have a good game and deal with the hate and not let it affect him really, Love seeing that. I know everybody loves seeing that. And as long as it continues, then, you know, you're going to be in good shape. And you know it's going to continue when they travel to Chapel Hill. You know, it's going to be big time that night. And I hope he drops 50. But, I mean, it couldn't have gone better. I mean, all of that, catching all that flack and everything. You know, he's not... He's not J.J. Reddick and Christian Leitner. He's he's misunderstood. He's a nice guy. He's shy. He's quiet. He's he's just a competitor. And when you're a competitor, you can get you know you can lose your you can lose your mind in a in a split second, and then you fucked up and it's done, and you can't take it back. J.J. and Leitner they were just hated because they were so good. They antagonized the crowd and the teams. They did little dirty gestures and dirty plays and. That's kind of what put them out over the top as far as talent and skill level and the type of player that they were. You know, Coach K, he kind of liked it. He likes that they have that side to him, but he likes being able to control it. He doesn't ever want it to go out of control. And then, you know, combine that with, yeah, they caught a lot of shit, but it wasn't the social media days. It wasn't the meme days. It wasn't the digital news days. And... That's what Grayson's dealing with, and I don't know how he deals with it. I don't know how any human deals with it. You know, ESPN, the reason why they're so fucking lame and every other big news account is because news accounts want to make headlines. They want to generate clicks. They want to generate listeners. They want to generate eyeballs. Like, they just want you to be on their site. So, if... A guy scores 50 points or LeBron James or Grayson Allen punches somebody in the face. The 50 points is a second, you know, it's a secondary thought. What they're going to post is insane video of Grayson Allen tapping somebody on the shoulder. It looks like a punch when really like he was like touching this dude like, hey, can you get off of me? Like, you're fucking spitting on me. Can you get the fuck off of me? Check this video out. Appears Grayson Allen may have slapped somebody in the face. Back to his old ways. People are going to click on that. But, oh, Westbrook has a triple-double again. Click here. Like, nobody really cares. I mean, we care about the drama. (coughs) So, I mean, that's why the media is the way that they are. You know, I saw... (laughs) I saw that one game where they're like, you know, when Grayson had 37 against Michigan State, the the ESPN guy was like, here we go. Tonight, Grayson Allen was tripping in a good way. <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? Like, please retire. That couldn't have gone worse for you. You sound so stupid. But when Duke's the most hated school, and, you know, we generate, Duke basketball generates the viewers, not because they have the biggest fan base, which is growing, and they do on on social media and everything. They have the most following. But people tune in to watch Duke lose, and that's why the viewership goes sky high and beats any other game. I'm sure this Indiana game did numbers. I mean, People checked it, and they saw it was a close game. Duke might lose. We get to tweet about them. We get to talk shit. We get to post memes. We get to troll people. I mean, I'll post some funny shit, but I never go around tweeting to other people to make fun of them or their team or whatever. I tweet some funny things when UNC loses or, or Duke wins or whatever. But, but, I mean, that's just kind of for the people who follow me, which are mostly Duke fans, to see and just get a little laugh out of. 
I'm never going to go tweet at Luke May. Hey, you fuck. You had somebody athletic guarding you, and you suck now, bitch. Fuck you. But for some reason, there's really people out there like that. Now, I can't, I can't seem to understand why. But, you know, they exist, and, you know, it's like little Cheeto fingers in your mom's basement or, or whatever it is, and they just love to hate on people. So I don't know where I went with that, but more of the story is, you know, he's in the social media age, and so whatever he's dealing with, it's, it's honestly kind of like ten times worse than J.J. Reddick and, and Christian Layton. You know, J.J. Reddick hit a three and threw up the shocker symbol. Hopefully, if you're listening to this, you know what the shocker symbol is. If not... I mean, just Google what does shocker symbol mean. (laughs) It's not great. Uh, It's kind of very gross. So he hits a three and throws up the shocker symbol. I mean, dude, if Grayson Allen did that today, I think he might get kicked off the team. And he'd be under the magnifying glass. He'd be criticized for a week. I mean, back then, you know, it was... It was just the thing, like, J.J. did it, and it was, like, savage, savage alert, and he dropped 40. Nowadays, it's like, if you do anything, show any type of emotion, just because you're a good competitor, it it's it comes out as, look what Grayson Allen did. So, I mean, that's fucking sucks for him, but he's going to have to deal with it, and in the end, if he's holding up that NCAA championship trophy, along with being an All-American, along with being a draft pick, I think he'll be all right. And that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so, I mean, that's another narrative is just the hate Grayson got and the shit that happened to him. And, you know, he dealt with it well. He handled it well. Had a good game. Came out with the win. Um, I mean, it was big time. So, I thought Duvall, he played well. Um, a couple times he did a few things where I was like, oh, my God, slow down. Like, just slow down. You don't have to do it all yourself. I know in the past you can literally go five on one and take the whole team out. But you have all this talent around you. It's a team aspect. You know, he had six assists, 15 points, and a lot of those points were big time where in the beginning of the game you just come out, hit a floater, hit one off the glass, hit another floater. I was like, damn. I think he got an and one, like, in contact and traffic, and I was like, okay, like, but at the same time, when he's driving in and the defense collapses, make the right play, which we've seen that from him. We've seen him make outstanding passes, have double-digit assists, and that's another big thing that in tournament time, you know, that's that's the Duval we need, the one that can get out and transition and finish plays, but if the defense gets back, make the right play, or if we need the offense set up, set up the offense and run it. Because, I mean, that's really, you know, Duke needs that bad. So, you know, pick and roll, too. Like, run the pick and roll. He's perfect for that with Bagley or somebody. So, yeah. And then uh, late in the game, Gary Trent Jr., he had some big plays. Um, And, I mean, he's good for that. He's good for showing up. When the pressure's on, I mean, he shows up. He hasn't proved that wrong yet, and it's good to see because we've seen people choke. I mean, you see players on all kinds of teams choke all the time, but this team is just like when it matters most, like that's when they're locked in most on both ends of the floor, and it's you know that's great to see. And coming conference time and tourney time, that's huge. So I mean, that's that, and you know. Everyone's going to be criticizing the defense and the team aspects that the team is struggling with right now. But you also see potential. You see huge blocks, huge plays, um, big rebounds, plays when it matters. And you see flashes of things that you know are going to improve. You just know they are. And, And so far what you've seen off the bench has been amazing with Delorier, Bolden and O'Connell, you know, even Goldwire. Like, you've seen some impressive shit. And it's all about improving, and they're going to improve. The potential and the talent is there. Let the coach do his thing and uh, just sit back and watch the results. You know, I'm going to keep saying they're going undefeated until they ain't, and that's how it's been so far. But, 
you know, there's going to be some really tough games pretty soon. So I'm still going to stick to that, though. I mean, I'm not I'm not sitting there book, putting money on that. I'm just going to say they're undefeated because as of right now, they're undefeated. Appreciate the listenership. Appreciate all of you people. Twitter's so fun. Uh, posting some videos and some savage plays and some dunks. And just uh, enjoying this team, you know. It's a good time to be a Duke fan, but there's a lot of work to be done and a lot of improvement to be made. So hopefully all that happens. You know, they play tomorrow, playing at South Dakota um, at Duke. So it's going to be good to see the boys lacing them up for Cameron. Uh, Probably see some improved probably see some improved shooting percentages. But, again, it's like the threes don't make or break the team. Just, But if you're going to take a three, just take a good three. I mean, Grayson looked a lot better last game. You know, he looked quicker, healthier, made some smart decisions. And, I mean, he just made some big shots late in the game. That pump fake step back three, I was just like – my jaw dropped. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, and then right back to it with a – step back fade away to seal the game i was like dagger good night indiana fans good night so that was good to see and you know him being healthy is huge so tomorrow south dakota you know duke's like a 19 point favorite right now i mean it should definitely be a win obviously but use this game as working on the things that need to be working on and just sharpening all the tools, executing the game plans, taking advantage of mismatches, and uh, working on that defense. So I'm satisfied. It's been some great games these first three weeks. Yes, it has been three weeks of the season. It's crazy. I feel like I just blinked and nine games went by. Like it was like one day, nine games. But – We'll be in the thick of it pretty soon, but it already feels like this team's battle tested as any team could be possibly battle tested at all. You know, Michigan State's in here thrashing people now. We beat them without Bagley. It's like that win's gonna look good down the road. So, uh, yeah, still number one, nine and zero. Game tomorrow. I'll get this up. We'll talk again soon. I appreciate all the feedback. Got some great feedback, and uh, that means a lot to me. I really appreciate that. So reach out, say hello, whatever it is. Enjoy the game tomorrow. Enjoy your weekend. Talk to you soon. I'm out.